In the first 10 episodes of this series, we've accomplished a lot. We have a fancy starter base with a variety of great contraptions in every building, a food supply, a giant automated timber yard, and a train line connecting the two areas with a fancy passenger train included. So we have done a lot of building, but today, it's time for adventure. And, and, and some building. Something about a bridge. So as you may know, I have huge plans for this world. I'll be creating a number of different industrial zones themed to what resources they gather, a bit like the timber yard we built last episode. And then we're going to be linking all of those back to a central storage. But there is a bit of a problem. And it's one that I bought upon myself. So this is a large biomes world, and that means everything's really far away. For example, it's about 10,000 blocks here, and as you can see, there's only a couple of different biomes. And that basically just means everything is really far away. And as such, I don't really know where we're going to be building these additional settlements, and we've not really uncovered that much of our surroundings. Well, I mean, 10,000 blocks is a lot, but you know what I mean. We haven't really seen what other biomes are around here, if any. So we're going to make a few things that'll aid our exploration and set off on an adventure to discover what secrets this world holds. I also want to get some netherite gear and swift sneak, so after some gentle exploring, things are likely going to be getting a little bit more dangerous. And I need a new horse too, for some reason. We, we, we don't know anything about that. Right, let's crack on. So the first thing I want to do to make this exploration a little bit easier is to make one of these, a brass jet pack. I have no idea how they work, but they sound like fun. It looks like I need a bunch of stuff for the mechanical crafter. That's fine. I need to make a steam engine. How do I do this? Oh my days, what's going on here? So I need brass sheets, cogs, propellers, andesite alloys. Okay, I reckon we can do this. And we only need one of these, so we can probably just do it on the machine down here. So let's make a bunch of propellers. Get ourselves a brass sheet. So if we do that, and I guess if we just cycle through these a few times, we should. Oh, okay, apparently I put two down there. That's fine. But in theory, if we just cycle through these things three times, I think it said, we should, in theory, get what we need. As long as it works. Sometimes they break. That uh, looks like it worked. Yes, we have a steam engine. And an incomplete one. We'll, we'll use that later, probably. So other than that, we just need brass. We need a couple of encased fans and some cogs. It doesn't look like I've got any spare fans at the moment. Not a problem. They're easy enough to make. I think if we just do this... Look at that, and um, we actually need two of those. So we put the brass in there, fans either side, cogs across the top, and a site at the bottom, and steam engine in the middle. And because it hasn't filled up the crafting table, we actually need to give it a little sort of b power bump, I guess, and then it should start crafting. There we go. And look at that, we have a jetpack. How cool is that? How does it actually work? Uh, it needs water and fuel to operate. Put it in your offhand, then drop your fuel or your water by pressing Q. Okay, and then we've got controls. You can fly up to 27 blocks. Uh, it has hover mode. That's good. But yeah, this should make traversing the landscape a lot easier, in theory. And when it comes to the fuel and water, it might be worth making some of these tanks because it says it automatically fills the stuff that uses the fuel. How do we make these? Ooh, sturdy sheets. Okay, I reckon we can do that. And then we'll take this for a test flight. Look at that. Oh, wait a sec. Do I, should I hide my bag? Yeah. Oh, that looks so cool. I like it. So let's make a couple of fuel tanks. We need sturdy sheets and we need some of these tanks. So we need a small fueling tank. I'm going to make a couple, actually, just so we've got plenty of fuel. And then we need to make a medium one and then a large one. Okay, we just keep wrapping it in sheets. That's easy enough. We'll get a medium one and then a large one. We'll get a second one of those. And there is a small filling tank as well for water, so that looks straightforward enough. So we've got fuel and water tanks. The question is, how do we actually fill these up? Let's try the water one first. It's probably going to be safer. Do we literally just scoop up water with it? Looks like it. And it also looks like it's automatically filling my jetpack. Look, because that's going down and my jetpack is filling up. Amazing. So we'll fill these up nice and easily. And I guess when it comes to filling up the other one, we're going to need lots and lots of lava. Hmm, I wonder. Do you reckon I can just chuck these on this thing? Will that fill it up? No. Can I grab it directly from here? No, that would be too simple, wouldn't it? I think we'll just go find a lava lake and fill it up. That seems like it'll be a much easier way of doing it. And I really need to turn off Enderman griefing. Look at these blocks, look. They're just appearing everywhere. Now, if we head down into our mines, I've been doing a lot of mining. And as such, I've uncovered lots of lava, I seem to remember. Oh, my days! Dive, dive, dive! Yeah, I don't need to be dealing with that. But as I was trying to say, I've been down here running my big old mining machine. In fact, it's quite large now. And uh, yeah, I've cleared out some massive areas here, mainly because we need lots and lots of tough for the bridge we're building later in the episode. But yeah, more importantly, look at all this lava we found. Let's just scoop all this up. We're now full up on lava as well. So in theory, our jetpack should work. Let's go take this thing for a test flight. 
Oh, I'm assuming if we just hold space, that's going to make us fly. Oh, it is. Look at that. And, oh, if we hold control, look how fast we can go. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, we'll get around in no time. So it's all well and good having a jetpack here, but there's one or two other things we're going to look at as well before we head off. The main one being this, the portable drill, because if we put an upgrade on this, a digging book, I think it was, or a digging enchantment, then it can actually mine a 3x3 three three area. And one of the things I do want to try and find is a mesa. And I know that eventually we're going to have renewable clay and all that stuff, but we just don't at the moment, and I want a whole bunch of terracotta. So hopefully we'll find a mesa. And if we do, I think a 3x3 three three drill will be a bit more useful than a pickaxe. Although we could also take our drill contraption. We'll take the contraption as a backup just in case we decide we want to utterly demolish the mesa. But first up, let's make this drill. So we need another steam engine. Okay, well, we've got an incomplete one here. Let's go finish this off. And what's this thing? a brass drill head so just lots of brass okay we can do this now we have a portable drill so how does this work okay it's filling up on fuel doesn't seem to drill anything though oh okay right it drills grass oh okay so if i hold down right click and then left click then it works let's just put this wall back look we've had a texture question is can we get the digging enchantment by putting it in here no, which means we'd need to find a book for it. But I don't think I have digging on any of my books right now. Let's try our luck quickly. Well, I'm not having any luck getting the enchants I want, but the drill does look pretty cool. I mean, we'll take it with us, but it's probably not actually going to be that useful unless we can get that enchantment on it. One other thing I think I should probably get is some slime boots, because if we're going to be flying around on a jetpack and falling a lot, I feel like this might be quite handy. But now, in theory, I should be able to fly up really high cut my jetpack and bounce oh look at that <laughs> oh that's a lot of fun i mean don't get me wrong we're not gonna be wearing this all the time by any means but i think for big exploration missions this thing is gonna be a treat but i think it's safe to say we're now fully prepared for our mission let's go see what we can find including a horse i really do want to find another horse i mean that is by far the best means of travel right oh and one more thing just before we set off there's been a bit of an update to the pack and if we now look over here on the top left we have a quests panel and look at this look at the quests there's so many quests but my wonderful mod unheard nightmare has spent a couple of weeks making this and essentially it will guide people through the game so if you've never played create before this should be able to guide you on what to do where to go and different things that you can do and make and so on and as you can see we've already completed some quests as well you do get mainly xp rewards for completing quests we've tried not to go sort of too overboard with giving people free things but as you play the game you'll unlock different parts of these quests there's also routes as well so as i say with the create one it has sort of a defined path of you know do this then do this and then do this and so on but if you've played modded before you've probably played with quests before anyway so i won't go into too much detail but the updated pack should be available in my discord by the time this video goes out as well as the opening of a brand new community server so if you're up to level three or higher in discord you better jump on and play this mod pack on this seed with our community so if you want to play the pack on your own or if you want to come play with us then by all means do join the discord there's a link in the description and the pack has now also been submitted to curseforge so hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to update and stay on top of in future and well basically just a lot easier for people to install it's all very exciting stuff but let's go exploring um on our map where do we want to go well we've been to the northeast and we've been to the southwest maybe we just sort of head west go this way and see what we find and then and then head north and i don't know let's just put some fun music on and see what happens Look at him go, he's a speedy boy. Oh, he's a skunk. Oh, no. Oh. Made a mistake. desert if i actually found a desert might finally be able to get some cactus oh that's gonna be amazing and there's a desert temple over there as well we'll go explore that what in the world is that that looks terrifying doesn't seem to be attacking me though so i'm not gonna attack it let's have a look and see what's in here nothing fun sadly but we'll take the tnt 
And there's a desert village over here as well. This looks cool. Ooh, loads of chests. And a camel. Oh, so cool. And according to our nature's compass, there's a Badlands about 2,000 blocks that way. So I guess that's the way we're going to go. And it would be rude not to take the camel. I mean, I've got a saddle and everything. Sorry, Tiny. I'm taking your camel. And I'm saying here and now, we do not plan on keeping this camel. We're just going to use him to traverse the desert a little bit. And then we'll uh, we'll set him free if he survives. Let the exploration continue. Come on, Humphrey. It's the next day. No time for a rest. And look, there's a rattlesnake right there. We really should get going. Come on. There we go. Come on. Yep, yep. Get away from the snake. Aha! I see Mesa in the distance. This is where we part ways, Humphrey. Enjoy your freedom. Thank you for the lift. Now let's go demolish some Mesa. Ooh, there's a chest. So I'm going to fly a bit deeper into the Mesa and we're going to find a nice place to do some digging. And one of these big hills might be good. Although it looks like I completely forgot to actually pack the mining machine. That's not ideal. Well, I guess we're doing this the old-fashioned way, and we don't even have a beacon either. Jeez. Well, I've stolen a bunch of the Mesa. That should do us for now. And, uh, well, I guess we kind of need to head back. And I did spot a couple of areas that I thought looked quite good for a potential mining town in future. In particular, this area here or this area here. But, yeah, we'll explore that in another episode. For now, I just need to head all the way back, to be perfectly honest with you. But I might head down this way and sort of see what's around here instead of going the same way we arrived. Because, well, then we can uncover a little bit more of the map. Maybe we'll find something interesting. Nope, not really. We found a couple more armor trims, but nothing to write home about. Although I did discover that Nightmare has actually added quests for uh, getting the armor trims, so I kind of feel like now I'm going to have to go out and get all of them, but we won't do that today. But that's good to know. We've got a built-in checklist. And if we have a look at the route we took back, we didn't really uncover that much more that was interesting. There was more deserts and more islands, but nothing particularly new. However, I have noticed this. Look at this. I didn't actually see this as I was going past. There's clearly a Woodland Mansion there. So we'll be raiding that at some point in future, not for the totems, but more for the armor trim. But although that trip wasn't massively successful, we did manage to get our cactus, and we've got a whole bunch of terracotta. So, well, we made some progress. The cactus being the most important there, because now we have green dye without having to crush flowers. So with the nice relaxing exploration done, I guess it's time to do the less relaxing exploration. That was really difficult to say. So we're going to try and find ourselves the deep dark. And to be honest with you, I'm going to go in pretty much just with a pickaxe and some torches. I, I, I don't know. Do, do we take a night vision potion? Uh, maybe we should make a night vision potion. How do we even make those? We do have a brewing stand. Uh, we have some nether wart. This is good. I think we need a golden carrot. And we have gold. We have carrots. So that should be okay. And I don't know how long we're going to be down there. So I think I'm going to make a bunch of these. And then we're just going to go for it and hope for the best. Got myself nine potions, a bunch of torches, and a bed I can place nearby when we get down there. So I guess let's just go for it. Let's try and get ourselves some swift sneak. I'm sure everything will be fine. So I think it was down the end of one of these original mining tunnels where I think I spotted an ancient city. Is that it? Yeah, look, through there. Yep, definite city, look. Easy now, Beardy, easy. There's a screecher there. Oh, jeez. Screechers everywhere. Oh. bad. I did a bad thing. Well, that's one and we haven't even found a chest yet. So I've been looking around the city and I cannot find a single chest. The places where they should be, they're just, they're just not. They haven't spawned in for some reason, which is a bit of a problem. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just run out of here and try and find another ancient city because, well, this one's useless because there should be a chest in front of there as well and there's just there's just not. That's mildly frustrating. And the problem is, I don't think there's any easy way of actually locating ancient cities. As far as I know, it's not actually something you can get a map to, but do correct me if I'm wrong. So we might have to put the swift sneak on hold for now, and instead, we'll just go find a bastion. A treasure bastion, specifically, and try and get a netherite template, because then we can upgrade our gear, and that'll be lovely. Well, I've got my jetpack, I've got my gold helmet, and I've got a weapon. So, yeah, I guess that's pretty much all we can hope for. Now, the problem is, this is a really terrible place for the portal. Um, let's see if we can get out into the open and then we'll go exploring, I guess. Watching out for those crimson mosquitoes this time. They're horrible. Here we are, out in the open. Let's go find a bastion. And having the jetpack is making this very easy. Oh, I like this. Then you... Like little skeleton birds. 
Ow! Hello, we seem to have a bastion here. Right, let's maybe just get on the roof and work our way down. Can we get on the roof on the other side? It might be a bit better for us. Yes, we can. Excellent. Right, let's do this. You got me feeling like a firebolt. Hot in the sky. Looking like a thunderstorm. Oh, those mosquitoes. Oh, they hit so hard. I've upset a lot of piggos. Well, despite all the loud noises, that wasn't too shabby. We managed to get exactly what we needed. We have the netherite upgrade template. We did also find one piece of ancient debris as well, but obviously we're going to need more. And that means we need to go mining in the nether, but our current mining machine probably won't really do the job because, well, lava's a problem in the nether. So we're gonna come down here and design a different drill and hopefully one that's gonna be a bit more protected from lava. And for that, there's a couple of options. We can either have lots and lots of deployers all around the thing to actually build a tunnel as it goes, or alternatively, we can make some kind of enclosed capsule, which may work. Wait, yep, yep. Okay, okay. <laughs> go! And I think that's the method I'm going to try. We're going to go for some kind of enclosed capsule, I think. And I don't expect this thing's going to look very pretty whatsoever, but hopefully it'll do the job for us. I wonder. Do you reckon if we did something like that, we could actually put a window on the thing? I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't work. But in theory, I should just be able to put a window in there and then at least we can see out while it's running. So we're also going to need some deployers here. So we'll put two there, which will be for putting down blocks. And then we'll put a seat in the middle here, I guess. So at least we can see where it's going when it's running. Actually, let's put these deployers behind. So if we put these a little bit further back, like somewhere here, let's rotate them around so we've got easier access to the filters. Two more deployers in there couple of plows at the back and I think if we just put a couple of slabs in here the starting rail underneath and that will be the one that deploys the rail and we should just be able to put the cart contraption there and jump down to give it a nudge to get everything started the sides should protect everything down here from lava and if we build up these sides here this should protect me from lava <laughs> let's just chuck some glass in these windows so we can see a little bit what's going on we're gonna need a buttload of chests as well so let's just put some in here so if we put a cart contraption down there, then set these filters so they place netherrack. Redstone torches on this one, rail on that one. And in theory, this should work, but we need to test it. In fact, before we do that, we need to glue it. So I think this should work, but I also think the best thing to do is to test it in the overworld first where there's less lava and just make sure this thing can actually move. Let's head to the mines and go try this out. And as you can see, we have had a bit of an adventure here digging out for andesite and diorite and other stuff as well. But, uh, well, that's not what's important right now. What is important is putting down this. So let's get that in here. Hour it up and give it a nudge. Well, it looks a little weird, but it's doing its thing. That looks very weird. It's just like a moving cube. Well, I'd say that that's mission success. So let's pick it up and try it out in the nether. And we'll see if we die a horrible Bernie death. And just in case of aforementioned Bernie death, let's just dump these templates in there. Everything else is replaceable. Them two would be annoying. So we're actually really high up here, which means I'm going to need to actually dig down before we can start this. To be honest with this, I think I'm going to do things nice and simply. And we're just going to put a ladder shaft in for now. Well, we're at Y7. That should be good enough. We just need to dig out an area so we can actually place the machine now. So hopefully this is enough space. Let's just give it a go. Well, it looks like we have enough space all the way around it. This is good. I guess we just need to power it up. Give it a nudge. And hope for the best. So I'm going to quickly collect this. And I guess let's just jump on and ride this thing. It's quite nice being able to see what's going on, if I'm honest. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, this isn't going to work. Right, so what we've learnt is solid blocks, obviously when they're a contraption, are no longer solid blocks. Amateur hour. We need a slightly different plan. So let's just put this back down again and think about this. So basically need a lot of deployers, don't we? That's what we need. 
Right, I think I've got it all worked out. We've got deployers absolutely everywhere. It does not look pretty, but it should do the job. So we have a line on either side to bridge up the sides. And then in the front here, we just have a wall of them. And well, because when this goes into a contraption mode, these blocks don't technically exist. They will actually sort of pass through blocks. So they should create a wall here which the drills will then sort of move forward and then drill away. So if there are any air blocks, they should get filled, basically. We've then got three at the front here, which are going to fill up the ones in front of the window, which will then also get destroyed by the drills behind. And as I say, there's deployers hidden in the walls here as well. And I'm hoping that's going to be enough to lava-proof this thing. Let's just quickly stick it all together. Right, it's all glued together. Let's give this a go. Just want to make sure it has actually picked everything up. And it's placed the blocks in front. It's created a wall. This is perfect. This should get rid of the lava. But I guess there's only one way to find out. Give it a nudge. Well, it seems to be working so far. And the lava we hit before has disappeared, so that's a good sign. And we've already got some ancient debris. Look at that. Amazing. So I guess we can just sit here for a bit and do some mining. Wonderful stuff. About 45 minutes later, and we're done with the mining, at least for now. So I went about a thousand blocks in that direction, and then about a thousand blocks back. And the machine held up pretty well, although we didn't actually hit any giant lava lakes. So, yeah, I don't know how they'd pan out. Wait a minute, what is that? Something hanging from the ceiling over there. Well, that doesn't look very friendly, but I digress. So, yeah, we did lots and lots of mining, as you can tell just by the amount of netherrack we've got. And we found... 18 pieces of ancient debris. That is pretty terrible and leads me to conclude I probably would have been better off just doing some TNT mining. But at least we have some ancient debris and we can at least netherite up our pickaxes. But that's enough adventuring and shenanigans for today. I think I'm ready to do some building. So with our four pieces of netherite, I've upgraded my three tools down here and I've upgraded the backpack, which gives me a bunch more slots. And more importantly, it gave me two extra upgrade slots, which is all very lovely. We wanted that. But now it's time to crack on with some building. And for that, I'm going to need a bunch of rails bit of stone just to help me out at the start here and a whole lot of tough mainly this eroded tough we're gonna be using a lot of this but we'll take a couple of variants as well and that's probably not gonna be enough for what we need but it's certainly gonna be enough to get us started we're also gonna need lots and lots of girders so there we go oh geez that's 512 i forget you get eight per one well, maybe not quite that many girders but we're definitely gonna need a lot so this is the bridge that we're going to be tackling it's a huge area so we're gonna need a lot of stuff for this but i want to make a little change to the top here before we actually do that because if we look at the map we've got a really long section of track here that goes all the way between the two areas and we could probably do with a passing place so that if there is a train that's sort of essentially waiting to get on the track it'll be nice if it's actually in shorter sections and on studying my lion i think the only place i can really do it is going to be over here so what we need to do is somehow get a second line in over here somewhere. Let's just get a few blocks out. And that doesn't mean that the bridge is going to be double wide, but I'm sure we can make that work. So if we were to do something like that, and then if we connect this up with the other end here, just like that, and then we need to attach it to this corner over here. So if we find where it goes white, which is there, connect that to here, but hold caps lock, of course. There we go. That should work a treat. We'll just need to make sure we put some signals in once we've built the bridge. So I think for this bridge, the style we're going to go with is going to be a bit like an aqueduct. There's going to be sort of big arches. We'll probably get a big one in the middle and then just kind of duplicate that down until it goes into the wall on either side. I think that's going to work best for this because it is a very vast expanse. The question is, where is roughly the middle? I mean, it doesn't need to be perfect, especially with it being a diagonal bridge but I think we probably want to try and find roughly where that's going to be. And I think I'm going to call it about there. What I might actually do is put a central pillar in the middle and then do sort of arches either side. So let's just mark this out. Jetpack is coming into its own here. Excellent. I think about that width for a pillar should work quite well. So I've got a lot of working out to do. I need to figure out how to get an arch in here. I need to figure out where the rest of the pillars are going to go. So I think I'm just going to crack on and place some blocks and I'll bring you back in once it's looking a little bit nicer. <laughs> been a couple of hours but i'm making some good progress we've placed a whole lot of tuff down we've got the arches in and i really do like the shape it just obviously looks very very flat it's just kind of a blocky thing at the moment but bear with me and it will look lovely shortly i promise and i've actually done both sides as well you'll be pleased to know but there's still plenty to do so i best crack on
think I'm done with the bridge. It's simple, but it's nice and effective. I actually really like how that's come out. It looks really cool from a distance as well. And with the train going across as well, oh, it's just marvelous. So I've just used a combination of framed walls, girders, and a couple of lights here, just with a few blocks mixed in to break up the texture. But what with it being such a big build, I didn't want to put too much texture on it. Just a little hint that it was once brickwork, and it's now a little bit worn. And I may add some mossy blocks down the bottom here. I haven't quite decided yet, but I do like the way the leaves and stuff just sort of gather around the little posts there. It does embed them in the landscape just a little bit better. And on the top of the bridge here as well, it's fairly straightforward. We do, of course, have the two tracks. I didn't want to use gravel here, so I've actually used sanded stone instead, and I think it just gives it a slightly different texture. And of course, I've added in the train signals as well. I've just used Nixie tubes on these ones because they're at an angle to the track. They look a little bit weird if I was to put the proper signals on them. But this all now works. The trains coming from that direction will always use this track, and trains going that way will use that one. In fact, there goes one right now. So we are making some really good progress on the railroads around here. We've just got one last bit to sort out, and that is this slope here that leads into what will be another bridge. And I think we're going to make this one as like a sort of girder steel iron bridge type thing. And then we can actually think about building the logging train that's going to transport all of our wood here back up to our main base. But sadly, that's all going to have to wait for another episode. But just before you click off, I do have some good news. While I've been recording this episode, the pack has been approved on CurseForge. So if you search for Create Perfect World, you can download this pack directly in CurseForge Launcher and play it for yourselves. But I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. I know I did. It was actually quite nice just to go out on a bit of an adventure. And I'm in love with this jetpack. It made building this bridge so much easier. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye now.